Hello everyone and welcome to two great games from the legendary tournament of peace that is currently uh, being played in Zagreb some 60 kilometers from where I live and uh, there is a possibility that I visit the tournament and um, I visit the players but my daughter is uh, is sick for the moment so I don't know if I will manage the time I hope I will uh, but we'll uh... Uh, we'll uh, get to that. If, if you have any questions that I might ask some of the players of the tournament, uh, also use this uh, comment section and, uh, you know, have the questions ready. Uh, I might be able to uh, pull it off. But getting back to this game, uh, this is uh, Hans Niemann versus Vasily Vanchuk, the, the legend uh, who uh, really uh, enjoys visiting Croatia for the Tournament of Peace, as uh, the Tournament of Peace really has a long tradition, started back in 1970. Uh, it was visited by none other than the great Bobby Fischer, who uh, at the time was practically unbeatable. Uh, he he hasn't lost a game in 1974 for like three years uh, and he won the tournament but he did lose one game at the Croatian uh, international master uh, Vladimir Kovac which is a legendary game if you haven't seen it do check it out first link in the description below. Uh, quite uh, an amazing game. Uh, but yeah it was uh, first uh, they organized it in 1970 then in 1975 then in 1985 after 10 years and then they abolished the tournament for 33 years it was revived uh, in 2018. Uh, where, uh, where Baskar and Adiban won the tournament, then they had one in 2019 that Vasily Vanchuk won. Uh, and this is like the sixth edition of the tournament, uh, where now Hans uh, is really having uh, an amazing, uh, amazing uh, run. And uh, there's a famous story from the first edition of the tournament in 1970, where Bobby Fischer visited. Uh, he requested uh, an extra $1,000 just to participate in the tournament, and the uh, tournament organizers um, uh, denied him this. And he said that he will not play. And they almost replaced him. Uh, but uh, in the b before the start of round one, the Slovenian gr grandmaster Bruno Parma uh, told uh, Fischer that the, the Russians were very happy that he is not playing. And this sort of rattled Bobby and he decided to play. The Russians being the Russians in the tournament. I think the former world champion uh, Tigran Petrosa and um, uh, Botvinnik, I think, were playing. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe, maybe one more, maybe... Uh, Korchnoi, yeah, Viktor Korchnoi was also playing in the tournament. Uh, but then, yeah, Bobby decided to play. Uh, he won the tournament and lost only that one game. I really suggest you you check it out. It's the first thing in the description below. Uh, Bobby Fischer crushed by none other than the French defense. Uh, even he is not immune to the opening. Uh, but yeah, that being said, uh, let's check it out. It's Hans Niemann now uh, walking in the footsteps of the great Bobby Fischer, visits Croatia, visits Zagreb, and wants to dominate the tournament. So let's see. This is the first game, and the second one we are going to cover will be against the uh, Croatian Grandmaster Robert Zelcic. So Hans has the white pieces in this one and he opens with pawn to e4. Uh, we have uh, pawn to e5, knight to f3, and knight to f6. Uh, if, uh, uh, yeah, even Chu goes for the Pet uh, Petrov's defense. Knight captures on e5, d6, and now knight to f3. We have knight captures on e4, and now pawn to d4. So, okay, the, the classical attack against the Petrov. d5, we have bishop to d3, knight to c6, and now castles. We have bishop to e7. And now, uh, standard moves here are c4, which is the top move, and rook to e1, which is the second, the most often played move. But Hans plays knight b to d3. He wants to um, uh, check how how well Vassal remembers the lines. And okay, knight captures on d2, bishop captures, and bishop to g4, pinning the knight. We have h3. Uh, sorry, not right away. First, uh, Hans played c3. You do want to guard the d4 pawn, as now the knight really can't help with the defense. Castles and pawn to h3 now. Bishop to h5, and now uh, uh, pawn to g3. Uh, not the pawn to g4 all the way, it would be a bit too ambitious, so pawn to g3 first. We have queen to d7 putting pressure on the h3 pawn and king to g2. Uh, we have bishop to g6 now, uh, countering the light square bishop here and bishop to f4. We have bishop captures on d3. Queen captures, and now, okay, the position has been reached before. For example, Anish Giri had it against Yuan Yi in the uh, Tata Steel Tournament of 2020, uh, where pawn to a6 was played, and that game ended in a draw. But here we have bishop to d6, and it is now as of move 15 that we have a completely new game. And, uh, okay, you could just trade here and maybe move the rook to, to the open e-file, but Hans first goes for knight to g5. He threatens checkmate, so uh, Vassal has to defend, and only now he trades. Captures, captures, and now rook a to 
e1. We have rook a to e8, of course, contesting for the d file, uh, for the open e file, and now pawn to h4, trying to get that pawn all the way to um, uh, get some sort of an attack going against the black king. Uh, knight to d8, now the idea is knight to e6, the trade of the powerful knight on g5, and Hans goes for pawn to h5. We have knight to e6, and now Hans, uh, if he doesn't uh, want to trade knights, he has to go back, which he does. So that which means that he's still interested in winning this game. He's not um, ready to settle for a draw just yet. And now Vassal could choose uh, for G captures on H5. It's sort of an engine move. Uh, you know, you mess up your pawn structure, uh, something that a human uh, does very, uh, very re reluctantly. Uh, so he goes pawn to C6 instead. And okay, we have rook to H1 by Hans, and now Vassal goes pawn to G5. Uh, he doesn't want to open up the H file, of course. Knight to E5 by Hans, and now pawn to H6. And it seems like you could go for knight to g4, very powerful, uh, eyeing the f6 and h6 squares. But if you do this, then knight to g7. And now the queen guards these squares. And if queen to f3, okay, you can simply play uh, rook to e6. You, you again guard everything. And if you if you trade here, then even f captures on e6 gains control of, uh, of uh, f6. So it's not really... Uh, an issue and you, you don't even have to play that like if rook captures you could even capture with the queen and one check doesn't really do all that much you can simply move the king so instead queen to f5 first and now okay you can't just uh, idly wait for uh, something to happen knight to g7 attacking the queen and now hans finds a brilliant resource and that is queen to d7 and okay how do you how do you deal with this you have to trade queens, obviously, or you could play queen to e7, but uh, he, he decides to trade queens. Knight captures on d7, attacking the rook, and the rook captures on e1 first. Uh, we have knight to f6 check. This is very important. If you if you capture the rook first, then you allow the rook into the game with tempo. So knight to f6 check, king to h8, and only now rook captures on e1, with the rook coming to e7 uh, uh, if you don't stop it. So knight to e6, and now rook to e5. Okay, uh defending properly uh no, nothing uh nothing wrong with the position pawn to a5 and now knight to g4 uh, uh, uh setting his eyes on that h6 pawn so king to h7 uh, if you play pawn to f5 and sort of try to trade knights then captures captures and you lose the h6 pawn as well you create a passed h pawn and that's it white will win this game so uh king to h7 first uh vassal has to defend that pawn and now rook to f5 going after rook f6 and rook captures on h6 we have king to g7 and now rook to f6 going after the pawn rook to h8 and now hans plays pawn to a4 and he sort of uh locks vassal in a, in a sort of a semi tuk swung as there really isn't all that much to do here uh, we're still not at a point where a move, uh, the definition of a two swung is that every move you make loses you the game. Uh, but it's very hard to find a move that doesn't. So here, pawn to b6 by Vassal, and now Hans finds the beautiful pawn to f4. Uh, not much to think about here. G captures. We have G captures. And now the problem is you can't just idly wait. If you play pawn to B5, then pawn to F5 comes. You even give up the H5 pawn. And then after knight to F6, uh, knight to F4 check, king F3, and you capture this pawn, uh, rook captures on C6. And now, okay, a B captures on A4. Pawn to F6 with checking H7, Rook C5. You go after the pawns, and the white has a completely winning endgame. So, uh, 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 Ivanchuk tried something else. He played rook to c8 first, but now pawn to f5, uh, and now knight to g5. Not going for knight to f4 check, as it doesn't really achieve all that much. Uh, knight to g5, and now rook captures on h6. We have knight to e4, uh, king f3, and now rook to c7. We have king to f4, and now knight to d2. Uh, very, very important uh, move for the knight because you want to shift the knight to c4 and go after the b2 pawn, but also have the option of going back to e3 if needed, if the white king becomes too active. So here we have rook to d6, uh, moving the rook out of the way of the h pawn, and now knight to c4. We have h6 with check, king to h7, and now uh, the position is completely winning for Hans, but you have to correctly um, assess the position. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the correct continuation at uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding, uh, well, any of the winning moves, like you could play a rook to f6 or knight to f6 check, but those are uh, slow. The quickest one is rook to d8. This is what Hans played, and uh, it was in this position on move f uh, 42 that uh, Vasily Vanchuk resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here.
Uh, point is that uh, if you if you do nothing here, let's say you play b5, which is your only active move here, you're getting checkmated. King to g5, and there is no defense against knight to f6 checkmate. Whatever you do, whatever move you play, it's knight to g knight to f6 checkmate. So the only thing you can do here uh, after this rook to d8 move is try something like knight to d2. Point being that now king to g5 will be met with knight to e4 check, but then you go after the b pawn, rook b8, and again leave uh, black without a move. Let's say pawn to c5, you will simply play rook capture some b6, and now if c captures on d4 knight to f6 check ends the game because if you go to h8 then this is checkmate once black gives up the rook and if you try something else um uh well what else is there to try if you try a knight to f6 check and now king captures on h6 you go under the mask of the rook and then knight to e8 with check will pick up the rook on c7 uh, and that's uh, all there is king h7 you're going to capture the rook and have a completely winning endgame as you are up a full rook uh, so that's what happened in round three. Uh, Hans played this sort of a drawish line. Uh, pretty much all of the games that were played uh, in this um, uh, sort of a uh, not an offbeat opening, but uh, not very, very often played, uh, ended in a draw, uh, including that uh, game Manish Giri played against Yuan Gi. Uh, Hans was able to, to uh, master the full point here. Uh, and now we advance to the second game, and that is uh, Hans Niemann versus Robert Zelcic. Uh, of Croatia. Uh, so let's see what happened in this one. It's also quite quite an amazing game. Hans played pawn to e4 and now pawn to c6. Uh, Robert goes for the Karo Khan defense with d4, d5 and Hans goes for the advanced variation of the Karo Khan. Now bishop to f5 is the, the absolute uh, main main move here but Zelcic goes for c5 first. This is the, the Botvinnik defense uh, and now knight to f3. Hans also chooses um, not, not the absolute main line as d captures on c5 is main here. So knight to f3, knight to c6, and now d captures on c5. We have pawn to e6 and bishop to e3. Uh, knight to h6, a standard move in the Karo Khan that you will see, uh, or maybe even in the French, trying to get access to that um, uh, f5 square. And now pawn to c3. We have knight to f5 going after the bishop, and bishop comes to d4. So if you capture, uh, Hans can just undouble his uh, pawns here. Uh, bishop to d7, and now there are some games that reach this position, uh, quite a lot of them in in fact, queen to d2 is a well-known move, bishop to d3, a3, all-known moves here. But we have bishop to b5 by Hans, and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. And there is quite a lot of thought um, invested in this bishop to b5 move and, and preparation, of course, uh, because it's not easy to deal with it. Of course... Um, you were asking what happens if just knight captures on e5. Can this be played? Then if bishop captures, then you capture back. So it does seem to be uh, gambiting a pawn. Well, let's see what he had in mind. Knight captures on e5. Robert takes the pawn. Uh, and now knight bishop captures, but bishop captures on e5. Sorry. Uh, not bishop captures on e5, knight captures on e5, bishop captures on b5, now going uh, uh, for the bishop and preventing Hans from castling, and now pawn to a4. And now look at this fun line. If you want to remain here on a6 and control this diagonal, look at what happens. Hans will play b4, and then after b6, Hans will play pawn to a5. And look at this ugly position. And now, uh, how do you continue here? The the main uh, defense here is f6, and then you run into a captures on b6, opening up a, a this Discovery on the bishop, a capture, so the rook defends. Queen to h5 with check, g6, knight captures, h captures, and queen captures on h8. Pawn to e5, where black gets a huge center and still keeps the white king in the center of the board. But now b5, and look at this, bishop captures, rook captures on a8, queen captures, now you gain access to f6, uh, and you get this position where... Uh, of course, if the bishop is captured, then queen captures on g6 with check, king to e7, queen captures on f5. Uh, it's a really, really wild position where, uh, well, yeah, it, the black king is in the middle of the board. Okay, queen to a2 can, can be played and looks very dangerous with the bishop here and everything, uh, but... Uh, well, objectively, it's a dead draw. Obviously, Hans knows knows this, and he knows how to play this position, and he would definitely have the upper hand, especially if Zeltic never saw this, and he would have to work all of this out uh, during the course of the actual game. So he went back, bishop to d7, not uh, you know, not trying to poke the bear, uh, and now pawn to a5. Hans grabs more space here, a6, stopping a6 by white, and now we have castles. Uh, bishop to e7, we have knight captures on d7, queen captures, and now pawn to b4, always 
a very strong move for white. We have castles and now knight to d2. Uh, bishop to d8, now shifting the bishop over to c7 to try and um, uh, put pressure uh, maybe on, on the white king. And bishop to e5, stopping that. We have f6, bishop to g3, and now Robert captures the bishop. Knight captures h, captures, and bishop to c7, grabbing hold of this long diagonal. Uh, knight to c4. This is a beautiful move by Hans because it takes uh, advantage of the only moment in the game where you can shift the knight over to b6 if you don't want to go all the way around via the a6 square because now uh, the queen is hanging if you capture on c4. So rook a to d8 and now he does get the knight all the way to b6. And now we have queen to c6. The queen is attacked. Uh, rook to e1 and now pawn to h6. Uh, you could also consider something like uh, like pawn to e5, but uh, uh, maybe it, it's uh, too 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 early for that. Robert wants to still prepare it. So first pawn to h6, queen to d3, and now pawn to e5. We have rook e to d1. It's a very odd move. Probably most of you, including myself, would play rook a to d1, but it's you know it's uh, th that's where you, you know. Uh, that's where the real difference between a grandmaster and a regular player comes into comes in mind. Uh, wh which rook belongs to to to, to which file? Uh, probably he played rook a to d1 instead of rook a to d1 because if bishop captures knight uh, a captures maybe he uh, would allow the queen to access the game via the a4 square. So maybe he wants the rook guarding the a4 square. But again, who knows? Rook e to d1 by Hans. Bishop captures on b6, a captures, and now rook to d7. We have queen to f5, uh, grabbing more space here with the queen, uh, and now rook to e8. Sorry, uh, rook uh, to e8, and now we have rook to d2, going for rook to d1. And this is now the uh, moment where Robert has to play pawn to d4. And uh, it's not the same. Here, move order really comes um, uh, into effect. You, you could try to double up first and then play d4, or you could play d4 and then maybe uh, decide uh, on doubling up later if needed. But uh, he played rook e to d8 first. Now he wants, uh, wants, okay, let's say rook e to d1 is played. He wants to play d4. But now Hans is completely winning uh, if he plays it correctly. So feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea that Hans played while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able uh, to do it, congratulations on not uh, playing anything weird like I do in my games uh, in Rapid. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to f4. This is the question that Hans asked and why d4 should have been played before rook e to d8. Uh, the problem is if you now play d4, then look at this. f captures on e5 and if d captures on c3, looks great, but now comes rook to d6 with tempo. The queen is attacked and now uh, the, the, there's just not a good move here. If you play this, then e captures, you have this amazing passed pawn here. Uh, if you don't capture, what else are you doing? The queen will move, you, you gain access to the e6 square, the c3 pawn will fall, white is absolutely dominating. So that's uh, the problem here. So after f4, e4 was played by Robert and now rook to d4. Now the entire position uh, gets blocked and d4 can no longer be played ever again for the rest of the game. So king to f7 uh, and now queen to h5 with check. King back to f8, now comes pawn to g4. Now Hans is ready to play g5 and open up the position towards the black king. Queen to e6, now comes rook a to d1, doubling up here. So you have to be careful, otherwise c4 might also be a move in the future. Uh, we have e3, grabbing more space here, advancing the past pawn, and now queen to f5. Very annoying move by Hans. Uh, you cannot trade queens, of course. If you, sorry, if you trade queens, then g captures on f5, and black is really... Uh, without a move here, uh, as the e3 pawn is now too advanced, you will win the pawn and then play c4 and easily win the game. So instead, after queen to f5, queen to e7 was played and now rook to e1. Uh, we have pawn to a5, as uh, there really are no other moves. The c5 pawn is uh, uh, trying to be weakened, uh, but pawn to g5, just opening up uh, at, uh, an attack towards the black king. A captures on b4, g captures on h6, and here Robert played b captures on c3, getting a second pass pawn, but Hans just plays pawn to h7. We have king to f7, queen to h5, check g6, and now Hans can win the game, but only if he plays one precise move. Feel free to pause the video and win the game while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, 
the move that Hans played and that wins the game is of course pawn to h7, but not bringing a queen into the game, he brought the knight into the game as this comes with check. And it's always very much uh, a pleasure to win the game this way, because if you bring a queen into the game, then black just captures here, and once you capture with checking a fate, and you just don't have enough material to win this, you're down a full rook. Uh, however, if after this you play... Uh, knight checks now you you have to play something how do you how do you continue with this do you capture the knight here then uh queen captures rook that's not really going to work so king to g7 was played and now knight captures on g6 we have queen captures on c5 and here hans played uh, a really really wonderful move he played knight to h4 point being that if queen captures rook he has knight to f5 check uh, winning the queen here so king to g8 was played and now knight to f5 we have pawn to c2 now uh Zilch is preparing to bring a queen into the game and here hans played queen to g6 check king to h8 Queen captures on f6 check, king to g8, queen to g6 check, king to f8, and now Hans finishes, finishes the game off with a brilliant knight to h6, and he was in this position on move 46 uh, that Robert Zelcic resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, the problem is, it seems like you can grab a full rook, but if you do this, then the idea is, of course, queen g8 check, king e7, now queen, uh, sorry, knight to f5 check, forcing the king to d, uh, forcing the king to, to f6, and now queen to g5 with check, king f7, and now knight captures on d4, uh, will win the black queen, and also the c1 square is being covered, so there is nothing, uh, uh you can do here, so grabbing the, grabbing the rook doesn't work. Uh, what about bringing a queen into the game? This also doesn't work because you can just play queen g8, check king e7, and now go for this checkmate, king d6, and queen to f6 checkmate as the pawn prevents the king from reaching the c7 square. And other than this, there's really not much else you can try. You can try to block queen g8 with rook to g7, but then queen to f6 check, king to e8, and now queen captures on g7, again, with all the same ideas. The rook is defended, you don't have time for this as uh, a queen to f7 will be checkmate. And if you try rook d7, then queen g6, check king to g8 queen to e uh, queen to g8 uh with check king to e7 and now even rook captures on e3 with check king f6 and rook to e6 will be checkmate so uh nothing works here for uh for uh, robert but everything works here for hans and that's why uh, robert resigned the game so you can see that hans is really really playing strong chess here uh, uh kept both uh uh, both uh, Vasily Vanchuk and Robert Zelcic in uh, in uh, well sort of sort of a Tsuk Tsuang for quite quite a bit of time, and in the end uh, he was able to uh, pull off a full point, and he's doing uh, incredibly well here. Uh, for the moment, uh, he's in first place after five rounds have been played with four and a half out of five. So he defeated Alexander Motilev, he defeated uh, uh, Vasily Manchuk, he defeated Zdenko Kozhul, he defeated Robert Delcic. Only one uh, that got a draw against him is Croatian Grandmaster Hrvoje Stevic. So uh, we'll see how he does. Will he be able to follow in Fischer's footsteps and win the legendary Tournament of Peace in Zagreb? And will he be able to do it without losing a single game? Something that Robert James Fischer was unable to do uh, as he lost that uh, legendary game to Vlad. Vladimir Kovacevic. If you haven't seen it, first link in the description below. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys enjoyed the two games. Uh, I thought it was uh, fitting to cover both of them. Uh, I would like to thank David Gasparian, Jotam Piano on YouTube, Joe Lennox, Mehet Haki Usail, uh, and Karim Kawash for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but also everything else that's happening in the chess world, like this wonderful tournament here. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.